Good morning, I'm John Tucker. And I'm Karen Moscow. Here are the stories we're following today. Bitcoin is trading up seven-tenths of a percent to around $46,240. This comes after U.S. regulators, for the first time, approved exchange-traded funds that invest directly in Bitcoin. This is a move heralded as a landmark event for the roughly $1.7 trillion asset sector. And Bloomberg crypto editor Anna Herrera says it will broaden access to the largest cryptocurrency. The whole Bitcoin proponents and sort of crypto proponents think it's a big deal because it sort of gives easier access to mainstream investors to investing in crypto. One of the big issues with cryptocurrencies is that you need to self-custody it and that that's exposes you to hacks and people just stealing your asset. In this case, you would have a custodian like Coinbase, sort of people that do it professionally, holding the underlying Bitcoin and you're just buying shares in it. Bloomberg Santa Rara says the SEC authorized funds from industry heavyweights BlackRock, Invesco, and Fidelity to smaller competitors, including Valkyrie, to begin trading today. Well, John, reaction is pouring in after the approval of the Bitcoin ETF. And we caught up with SEC Commissioner Hester Peirce. I'm delighted that we're at the end of this saga. Um, I know there's still, there's, still, uh, there's still pieces of it to go, but I think this is a big milestone. The decision by Hester Peirce and the SEC comes a day after a false post on the SEC's X account claiming that the agency had approved the ETFs. The regulator subsequently said that the account had been compromised. And ARK Investment Management Kathy Woods says uh, the approval of the spot Bitcoin ETF will be a price-moving event long-term. She spoke with Bloomberg's Carol Masser after the SEC decision. I was speaking to Eric Balchunas, mm-hmm. uh, her colleague, and according to his estimates, there's there's four billion dollars waiting, you know, in the wings. And I said to him, well, from your lips to God's ears, <laughs> uh, that would be amazing. Or Kathy Wood also slammed the SEC chair, Gary Gensler. She says Gensler denigrated the whole crypto space by reiterating the agency does not endorse digital assets. Well, we want to turn to the economy now, John, and Wall Street is bracing for the latest inflation report. Economists are forecasting consumer prices rose two-tenths of a percent in December. And we get a preview from Bloomberg's Michael McKee. The question going into the CPI report is, who will care? The Fed is already locked into no change at the January 31st meeting, so an as-expected number won't affect the central bank's decision. It's the bond market that matters, at least in the short run. Headline inflation is expected to rise, a base effect because inflation printed negative in December of 2022. But core inflation is forecast to keep falling. That's what the Fed wants to see. Michael McKee, Bloomberg Radio. All right, thanks, Mike. The head of the New York Federal Reserve says interest rates are now high enough to bring down inflation. But John Williams also suggested policymakers need more evidence that price rises are slowing before they start easing. My base case is that the current restrictive stance in monetary policy will continue to restore balance and bring inflation back to our 2% longer run goal. I'll expect that we will need to maintain a restrictive stance of policy for some time to fully achieve our goals. And it will only be appropriate to dial back the degree of policy restraint when we're confident that inflation is moving towards toward 2% on a sustained basis. That's New York Fed President John Williams adding that any rate cuts would be dependent on the path of inflation and the economy. Well, turning to politics now, John, the gloves were off during last night's Republican debate in Iowa between Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis. During the CNN event, Haley accused DeSantis of mismanaging his campaign. He has blown through $150 million. I don't even know how you do that. Through his campaign, he has nothing to show for it. He spent more money on private planes than he has on commercials trying to get Iowans to vote for him. If you can't manage a campaign, how are you going to manage a country? DeSantis accused Haley of making misleading statements about her record as governor. Now, that word salad is the problem. Governor DeSantis. He says she's always supported school choice, and she failed to deliver. She blames other people. Leadership is about getting things done. Stop making excuses. <laughs> DeSantis and Haley also discussed the border, Ukraine, and abortion. And Karen, two people noticeably absent from the debate, Donald Trump and Chris Christie. The former New Jersey governor, Chris Christie, suspended his presidential bid ahead of the event. From the moment I got into the race, the decision that I made was really simple. I would rather lose by telling the truth then lie in order to win. Christie also says he's going to make sure he does not enable Donald Trump to ever be president again. 
Well, speaking of the former president, John, he was counter-programming the debate last night, appearing in a town hall on Fox News. He used the platform to lay out his plan to deport immigrants. We are going to have the largest deportation effort in the history of our country. We're bringing everybody back to where they came from. We have no choice. Former President Trump is promising to fix the situation at the border within 24 hours of taking office. And meantime, Donald Trump's legal troubles continue. Today, he makes an appearance at his civil fraud trial in New York. More from Bloomberg's Amy Morris. Today's hearing will cap an 11-week-long trial in which New York Attorney General Letitia James seeks to ban Trump from the real estate industry within the state. Trump wants to deliver a personal statement while in court, his own closing argument, but would not agree to the limits the judge set on what he could say, so he won't be allowed. Justice Arthur Engeron had already held Trump liable for fraud and is expected to deliver a verdict in coming weeks. Now, in addition to this case, Trump also faces five other trials, including a defamation suit in less than a week. Amy Morris, Bloomberg Radio. All right, Amy, thank you. And Chesapeake has agreed to buy Southwestern Energy for $7.4 billion. And this is Bloomberg. Time now for a look at some of the other stories making news around the world. And for that, we're joined by Bloomberg's Amy Morris. Amy, good morning. Good morning, Karen. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg says Boeing's MAX 9 airplanes, airplanes rather, will remain grounded until regulators say that they are safe to fly. That dashes hopes for a quick return to the skies. Our concern and, and our uh, fidelity is not to uh, the success of any company. Uh, it is to the safety of the traveling public. Secretary Buttigieg did not specify how long it could take, but says the process will not be rushed. He adds Boeing has to demonstrate that every plane it delivers to airlines is 100 percent safe. President Biden's son is scheduled to appear in federal court today in Los Angeles on tax charges. Today's hearing will be an arraignment for Hunter Biden, who was accused of choosing not to pay more than a million dollars in taxes and evading other taxes. House Republicans yesterday conducted a hearing to hold Biden in contempt of Congress for defying a subpoena to sit for a closed door deposition. But Hunter Biden made a surprise visit and said he would only testify in a public forum. Biden's attorney, Abby Lowell. Hunter chose a hearing where Republicans Sir? could not distort, manipulate, or misuse that testimony. Republicans have tried to tie Hunter Biden's business dealings to his father, but acknowledge they have found no concrete evidence of wrongdoing. And former President Donald Trump is staying quiet on who his choice for a vice president might be. Well, I can't tell you that, really. I mean, I know who it's going to be. Give us a hint. I'll give you, we'll do another show sometime. During last night's Fox News town hall event, Trump said he's open to his vice presidential choice being someone who's currently competing against him for the GOP nomination. Experts who identify and manage global risks say there is a high chance of a global catastrophe happening within a decade. The World Economic Forum survey shows nearly two-thirds of respondents expect the higher chance of disaster in the next 10 years, About 30 percent expect the same in the next two years. The report cites risks from misinformation, a potential recession and extreme weather events. And a record number of Americans are signed up for the Affordable Care Act this year. The Biden administration announced more than 20 million people signed up for health insurance plans under ACA, beating last year's record of 16 million. And that number is likely to increase as Americans have until January 17th to enroll. Global news 24 hours a day and whenever you want with Bloomberg News Now. I'm Amy Morris, and this is Bloomberg. Karen. All right, Amy, thank you. Well, we do bring you news throughout the day here on Bloomberg Radio, but now you can get the latest news on demand, and that means whenever you want it. You can just subscribe to Bloomberg News Now to get the latest headlines at the click of a button. You can get informed on your schedule. You can listen and subscribe to Bloomberg News Now on the Bloomberg Business app, Bloomberg.com, plus Apple, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. It's time now for the Bloomberg Sports Update. Here's John Stashauer. John. Can to truly appreciate what Nick Saban accomplished as the football coach at Alabama, you have to look at where the program was before he got there. They had had a couple of seasons with only four wins, another with three, and he only won seven in his first season on the job. But in his next 16 years, Saban won 199 games 
and lost only 23. He won six national championships in a 12-year span. And when you throw in that he also won one at LSU, Saban has to be considered one of the greatest coaches, if not the greatest, in college football history. He's retiring at the age of 72. Still at the top of his game, Alabama nearly beat the eventual national champion Michigan in the college football playoff semifinals. Pete Carroll, also 72 years old. He's no longer the coach of the Seahawks. He was great at USC, went to Seattle, and in 14 years got the Seahawks to the playoffs nine times, won a Super Bowl. He won 50 more, 51 more games than any other coach that the Seahawks have ever had. And now seven NFL teams are looking for a new coach, and that doesn't count New England, where 71-year-old Bill Belichick is expected to depart. Kawhi Leonard, a new deal with the Clippers. He would have been a free agent after the season. It's a three-year extension. They'll actually make a little under the Supermax. Clippers won last night. So did the Celtics in overtime over Minnesota. Boston now 18-0 at home. The Wizards dropped to 6-31. and They lost at Indiana. John Stashower, Bloomberg Sports. From coast to coast, from New York to San Francisco, Boston to Washington, D.C., nationwide on Sirius XM, the Bloomberg Business App, and Bloomberg.com. This is Bloomberg Daybreak. And good morning. I'm John Tucker. We want to continue our coverage of the SEC authorization of Bitcoin spot ETFs and what the breakthrough means for the broader crypto space. Yesterday, RK Investment CEO Kathy Wood, a longtime Bitcoin bull, joined Bloomberg Business Week host Carol for a conversation on Bloomberg Radio and the Platform X discussing the SEC decision and what it means for Bitcoin and other digital assets and the statement afterwards from the SEC Commissioner Gary Gensler. Let's bring you part of that discussion right now. When you're talking about institutions that, that uh, you know, have been very fearful of this space because of Gary Gensler and, you know, all of the drama, um, I think they're going to tread lightly. I don't know if you saw, but Gary Gensler put out a piece today right as we're about to go effective, and I'm, I'm sure we all went effective roughly around the same time. And um, he, he just denigrated the whole crypto space. And I was just like, I couldn't believe it. Uh, so anyway, uh, I, I, it's with that kind of trepidation that institutions are, are going to have to, you know, work through and do all of their due diligence. However, uh, I do think that uh, a lot of investors have considered, uh, you know, uh, have, have been curious. And you'll see uh, we've been uh, from a marketing campaign, we've been using this tagline, aren't you a bit curious? There are so many people who are curious out there. Of course, a lot of our existing clients know all about Bitcoin because we have owned it since 2015. But there are a lot of people who really have a hunger to know. And we can see that as uh, more and more people read our research, tune into our Bitcoin brainstorm that we do with Rod and, uh, and Bitcoin Park in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, read our Bitcoin monthlies and, uh, you know, read uh, all we have to say about crypto in blogs and, and in our uh, brainstorm summary. So, you know, we are getting all the curiosity. I think that's why we started. So we know a lot of people are waiting and believe it or not, Carol, uh, the curious extend to state pension uh, funds and state treasurers we're talking to. So it's a really uh, broad swath. Well, Kathy, and I do wonder what you think success will be out of the gate in terms of investment flows. What's your hope, what's your goal or estimate uh, in terms of bringing investors into the fund? Well, it's very interesting. I was um, uh, we were I was speaking to Eric Balchunas, mm -hmm. uh, your colleague, and according to his estimates, there's there's four billion dollars waiting, you know, in the wings. And I said to him, "Well, from your lips to God's ears, <laughs> uh, that would be amazing." And you know, we hope we get our fair share of it. I mean, we've certainly. Um, we've certainly done a lot to educate the community, and we uh, we experience a lot of gratitude for that too. From from 
from the innovation communities, including the Bitcoin community, but also from the financial community, those who really are trying to find the next Kathy, big idea. And this Kathy, is can a I ask you, because you mentioned um, SEC Chair Gary Gensler at the top. And as the headlines crossed the Bloomberg um, that he, the SEC approved all of those uh, proposals for the spot Bitcoin ETFs, yours included, along with everyone else, the 11. He also said investors should be cautious on crypto. He said SEC's action doesn't imply mm -hmm. approval of crypto exchanges. And if you look at all the SEC filings, yours included, there's a long list of concerns uh, that there's this is still kind of a new concept and new idea. The old guard you know, basically throw out there all kinds of risks and, you know, some people call it fear, uncertainty and doubt. Uh, it happens every time, Carol. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing uh, for people to really do their homework. They should do their homework. They should understand the risks. Um, but uh, this is par for the course in disruptive innovation. You know, ever, and, and thank you, Carol. Uh, you gave us our first interview, 2015, when we were barely off the ground. You believed in us back then. And at the time, you remember we were talking about Tesla. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So much fear, uncertainty, and doubt, not even about autonomous, which is the next set of fears, but about EVs and wouldn't traditional auto manufacturers absolutely choke them to death. This is completely new DNA. And so it's the old DNA, as the old car companies were, the old DNA, uh, you know, basically bashing the old new DNA. Uh, that was ARC Investments, Kathy Wood, speaking with our Carol Masser on Bloomberg Radio and the social media platform X. And we continue our coverage of the approval of the Bitcoin ETF with the SEC Commissioner Hester Peirce uh, joins our Kelly Lines and Joe Matthew on Bloomberg's Balance of Power to discuss the implications of the SEC's approval of the exchange-traded funds that invest directly in Bitcoin, as well as the future of crypto regulation and the SEC X account hack. Let's go to part of that discussion. I'm delighted that we're at the end of this saga. I know there's still pieces of it to go, but I think this is a big milestone. Well, it's a milestone certainly for these these Bitcoin products, but it also raises a question of what sort of precedent this sets. If you look at the statement from the chairman, Gary Gensler, he was very specific that this is specific to these Bitcoin products, which are non-security commodities. And there is a question of what this could mean in the future for essentially everything else. Is that door completely closed? The chair is right to point out that this is specific to a particular set of products, um, but obviously precedent matters. And so you look at the reasoning and, and people will do this. They'll look at the reasoning in the in the order and they'll um, seek to apply it to other facts and circumstances as appropriate. Um, so I, I think the only thing I will say is that one of my complaints in this area has been that we haven't always stuck with precedent um, when, when it comes to these kinds of exchange traded products. We haven't necessarily applied the same standards that we do with respect to um, to other kinds of exchange traded products, but it is a precedent people will point to. That's the question. Of course, we're all asking whether it opens the door for other ETFs backed by other cryptocurrencies. Commissioner, is that in our near future? Again, I, you know, every application has to be considered on its facts and circumstances, but I, I one of the things that I, I think that we have to acknowledge is that when we when we apply a particular rationale to one particular product, people will ask us to apply it to other products as well. What kind of fiduciary responsibilities are there for investment uh, advisors for their clients before allowing them to put money into these products? It's like anything else. The a fiduciary is is supposed to look out for the interests of of the investors that she's working with. And that means taking into account the specific um, circumstances of that investor, the risk tolerance, uh, the other elements of that of that investor's portfolio. And so it's not a cookie cutter answer one way or the other. Fiduciaries are paid to make good decisions that are appropriate for that particular investor. There were a few moments yesterday when we thought this had been approved a day earlier, uh, Commissioner, as you well know. Everything worked out with the Twitter account at the SEC? Well, it is. I mean, as, as 
we uh, there was a statement I think that came out saying that um, we are going to be looking into this and working with law enforcement authorities to figure out how how this happened, how yesterday's event happened, and um, and I hope that we get to the bottom of it, and I hope that we're as transparent when we um, when we explain what happened as we expect um, the companies that we regulate to be when they experience a similar event. Well, that certainly has gotten the attention of many on Capitol Hill, Commissioner. There have been many uh, congressional Republicans who have made their opinions known about the SEC under this chair for some time now. I'd also uh, point to a statement that we got out from that financial House Financial Services Committee after this. They maintain that while legislation to provide clarity and certainty for digital assets remain necessary, the steps taken today are a significant improvement over what they call the SEC's track record of regulation by enforcement. Until that legislation exists, even with these approvals aside, should we expect that regulation by enforcement to continue? Well, I haven't seen much progress on us as a regulator setting out clear rules of the road when it when it comes to crypto products and services. And I think that that's been a complaint that I've had. It's been a complaint that others have had. We could, just as we changed our, our tune here, we could change our tune on that. And, and so I remain hopeful that we will. That said, it, Congress has expressed an interest in legislating in this area, and I look forward to seeing um, their work in this area. And, and they have a, a, a clear interest in figuring out which regulatory, which regulators should have authority in this area. And I look forward to um, to, to seeing what comes of that. There are also just questions around fraud and manipulation. The argument initially ab about what Chair Gensler was so concerned with about these products in the first place, spot products specifically compared to futures, obviously a court has ruled that that distinction uh, was arbitrary and capricious. But do you share any concern? If people put out false information about a, a traditional security, a traditional s company, um, the stock of that company can also, the price can also move. So this is not unique to Bitcoin or, or Bitcoin exchange traded products. Obviously, we will continue to look at the markets and at the markets for these Bitcoin exchange traded products specifically. And if there is bad activity and it's it's within the ETP marketplace, we have authority there to um, investigate and bring enforcement actions as needed. You're listening to Bloomberg Daybreak Today, your morning brief on the stories making news from Wall Street to Washington and beyond. Look for us on your podcast feed at 6 a.m. Eastern each morning on Apple, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. You can also listen live each morning starting at 5 a.m. Wall Street time on Bloomberg 1130 in New York, Bloomberg 991 in Washington, Bloomberg 1061 in Boston, and Bloomberg 960 in San Francisco. Our flagship New York station is also available on your Amazon Alexa devices. Just say Alexa, play Bloomberg 1130. Plus, listen coast to coast on the Bloomberg Business app, Sirius XM, the iHeartRadio app, and on Bloomberg.com. I'm John Tucker. And I'm Karen Moscow. Join us again tomorrow morning for all the news you need to start your day right here on Bloomberg Daybreak.